Solve for x. A nice trick is to realize that the exponent tower of x, x to the x to the x to the x, is what we're calling 2. This infinite iteration, this repetition, means we can just place 2 anywhere we see x to the x to the x on forever. And this equation reduces to 2 equals x squared, which is a relatively easy equation to solve. Just take the square root of both sides, don't forget your plus and minus. Are these the answers? We made an assumption in saying that a solution even exists. Not to mention there was more than one. For one thing, the function x to the x is typically not defined when x is negative, at least over the real numbers. So we should probably throw away the idea that x equals negative square root of 2. That's not to mention that that solution would also violate our logarithm properties. If we take the log base 2 of both sides of this equation, using our properties of logarithms to drop down that exponent, again x to the x on forever is 2, the solutions to this logarithmic equation are square root of 2, but not negative square root of 2 since logarithms are not defined for negative values of x, at least over the real numbers. Thus, if a solution exists over the real numbers, it's square root of 2. A more rigorous way to prove that this is the solution is to set up this tower like a sequence. Consider the sequence 0, 1, root 2, root 2 to the power of root 2, root 2 to the power of root 2 to the power of root 2, and so on. This sequence represents our tower with the solution square root of 2 starting at 0 and with the recursion a sub n plus 1 equals square root of 2 to the power of a sub n. That is, the next term is just square root of 2 to the power of the previous term. If this sequence converges, it converges to 2 as we saw before. How do we prove a sequence converges? One way is to show it's both monotonically increasing and bounded above. If it's bounded above by some number, in this case 2, and it's always increasing towards 2, well it must converge at 2. All the values must pile up at 2. Our task is twofold. Show that every term in this sequence is less than 2, also that this sequence is always increasing. And although I haven't covered it too much on this channel, a great tool for this is mathematical induction. This is the proof-based technique that's very similar to lining up a row of dominoes, knocking over one domino, and making sure each domino knocks down the next. If you knock down all the dominoes, you've done the proof. If we want to show our sequence is less than two, we need to knock down that first domino, it's called the base case. Well, our first term of the sequence is zero, that's less than two, that's easy. Next, we need to make sure if we knock down any domino, it knocks down the next domino. So we assume a general term in the sequence, a sub n, is less than 2. That's like knocking down one middle domino. We want to show the next domino, a sub n plus 1, is also less than 2. Fortunately, we have the recursive relationship. a sub n plus 1 is square root of 2 to the power of a sub n. And we're assuming a sub n is less than 2. We can just replace that with 2 in the exponent using a less than symbol. And it just so happens square root of 2 squared is 2. Thus, a sub n plus 1 is less than 2. If we knock down the nth domino, the n plus 1 domino also falls. By induction, our sequence is less than 2 for all n. Let's do the same thing to show that this sequence is increasing. Our base case, our first domino, we can just look at the first two terms, 0 and 1. The second term is greater than the first term, that's our base case, that's increasing. Next, suppose 1 a sub n minus 1 is less than some a sub n. 
root 2 is larger than 1, square root 2 to the power of a sub n minus 1 is less than square root of 2 to the power of a sub n. Use the recursive relationship, which is to say that the function is always increasing by induction. What have we said here? This sequence is bounded above. It's also monotonically increasing. It must converge. If it converges to a limit L, then the limit of a sub n is the same as the limit of a sub n plus 1. We can treat the recursive relationship like an equation applying the limit as n goes to infinity on both sides, and we would have L equals root 2 to the L. Of course, our answer of 2 satisfies this equation.